He's genuinely in love with his family, with his wife, with his house. And he has this thing that tugs at him, sometimes every two years, whatever it is. He knows two parts of himself, but he's never been able to put those two parts together. He's never been able to say to Emma or to Jane, I'm a serial killer. My name is Earl. I'm an addict. It's absurd to think that you would go to, you know, a 12-step program to look for relief from a sociopathology because it's a whole different world of question. I mean, yes, it may be an extension of the notion of addiction, but it is not pure and simple. If you were honest, you'd step up there and say, Hi, I'm Earl. I killed two people last night. I really got off on it, but I need your help. He is so heavily conflicted, and when we come into the story, he's so fully evolved that every single scene he plays, there's another layer of Mr. Brooks that we see. Thank you all very much. When I started the Brooks box factories, I never dreamed I would. And here's a dashing man in Kevin Foster, Mr. Brooks. And now all of a sudden, you peel one little piece away and you realize that he has an addiction and this guy's addicted to killing. <laughs> He's a very precise guy, and he is compartmentalized. He's done it effectively, and he's not a careless person. Serial killers gain their pleasure through the pain of others, and it's an important detail and characteristic of Mr. Brooks. There's a thumbprint right there. One his, one hers? That's what it looks like. This guy hasn't been active for over two years. He always rearranges the bodies, but this is way out of character. Make no mistake, the place he goes to is indefensible, it's despicable, it's what we all fear, and it's a disease, it's consuming him. We thought of people that we would want to be in the movie, and Kevin was always at the top of that list, because he's a hero. Kevin is great looking, he's charming as hell, and that's who we needed to be man of the year. He's funny, he's just a great dude. You know, it's like you, you do want to hang out and go, uh, you know, go fishing and hang out with uh, Kevin Costner. So doing all these scenes, uh, you know, side by side, driving around with him, and although we're playing uh, some despicable, uh, you know, people, uh, when they say cut, the experience I'm having working with him is, uh, is valuable to me. I don't think I want to kill this guy. What? Oh, I love what you are thinking. You have no idea what I am thinking. Yes, I do. And it's wonderfully twisted. I'm glad I don't have voices in my head. I mean, I, I have my ambitions and I have my fears and everything that go, I think, with what everybody else out in the world has. But I don't have a voice, you know, just pushing me to the edge. Thank God. I remember calling Bill one night, got him real late, hadn't really dealt with him in a long, long time, having worked with him on the Big Chill, but really just having a very long distance awareness of each other. I called him and I, and I remember saying, I said, look, I have a little present for you. I said, I don't know how you're gonna feel about it, but I'm gonna send it to you. You tell me whether or not this role speaks to you. I said, because if it does, you have it. And that's how I like to do things. I thought I would kind of laser in on an individual and see if that would make sense to him. And the role did. Don't you dare quit on me, you piece of shit. I wanna see what they're doing. When you write uh, something or you're, you're directing something, you have a tape playing in your head of how it should sound and how it should look. And William Hurt always expanded that tape. He did things that you never imagined possible, and it elevated Marshall way beyond anything that we imagined. You think that he's gonna kill you after you kill somebody else. You're getting your rocks off big time. That's why you're doing this. Not true, and if it were, so what? As the little voice in our head, Marshall has a reason to exist. Marshall has a life inside Mr. Brooks that is very full and very satisfying 
and he doesn't want that life to end. I think that's what I want to do. Well, I'm not particularly fond of that plan, Earl. Remember, if you die, I go with you, and I like being alive. I like eating. I like fucking. I like killing. Uh, Marshall, in being a pure concoction of Brooks's psyche, has a purer motive. So that if Brooks threatens his own life, it threatens Marshall's existence, and I've been playing with uh, the, the layers of that motive. There's no harm in mean, just having a look. No means no, Marshall. Please. Pretty please. And it was clear to me that Marshall was a character that people, when they got over the outrageousness of what he was saying and what he was projecting and what he was actually uh, insinuating should happen, is you go, wow, it becomes a really fun character to watch. You enjoy doing that couple just as much as I did. And look at the bright side. He came to us. He didn't go to the cops. If he tries to shake us down, we kill him, period. We make it fun, but we kill him. Well, I think that uh, Marshall is all things. That's why I allow him in my life. He knows, he knows when to coddle. He knows when to, you know, back down. He also knows when to put the pressure on. Most people that are in your life effectively have know the buttons in your life. They know how to to um, maneuver around you, and his, the conscience knows how to move, when to back off, when to put the pressure on. Dane was a surprise. Dane came out of left field for us. We were we were looking and looking and looking and. Um, and that was actually good agenting in this instance. I don't think I finished the script. I think I got halfway through, and I'd already made a call like, I, you know, what is this? How can I, how can I be a part of this? Dane right. showed up on the set, was got on his jacket, and he has the beard and the hair coming down, and he and he comes up to me, and says, "How does this look?" And for a moment, I went, "Oh my God, Mr. Smith lives." I think what uh, ultimately brought, you know, excited me most about. Mr. Smith was, this was a guy who was on a path of destruction. Do it. <laughs> and I like that this guy is taking all the wrong steps. The look on her fucking face was great. It was great, it was fantastic. That was everything that I, I, I hoped it would be. Thank you. You're welcome. He looks at his life as a, as a great starting off point for what will be his adventure of, of you know, becoming a, a, a serial murderer. Before I was the thumbprint killer, Mr. Smith, I killed a lot of people in a lot of different ways. He'll already be dead. Why do you fight it so hard, Earl? 